So recently, so many of you guys have been commenting and DMing me and writing everywhere how do you get these cool looking, clean, minimalistic renders. So today I'm gonna spill the beans and I'm gonna show you the secret to my render settings. So if that sounds interesting, then follow along because we're gonna jump right in to Redshift. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this image popping up in your feed. So this is the scene we're gonna use today, and I'm gonna show you how I do my render settings. Hold up, wait a second. So we first need to talk about how cameras in real life works. So we have three main factors that together determine our exposure, and that is aperture, shutter speed or shutter angle, and ISO. So what is aperture? Well, aperture is a measure of how much light your lens is letting in to your camera sensor. And it works by opening up the hole in your lens or closing it down. So the bigger the hole is, the more light is let into the camera, resulting in a brighter image. And the smaller the hole is, the less light is let into the camera, and that's resulting in a darker image. And the way we measure this is we measure the hole size in f-stops. And the f-stop range is actually backwards in how you would think it would work. So the bigger the hole is, the lower the number is. And the smaller the hole is, the bigger the number is. So if you have a 1.8, will have a real large hole and if you have a f16 then we'll have a really small hole so what is shutter speed and shutter angle well we're gonna focus on shutter angle because shutter speed is something that photographers use and we're gonna use shutter angle because we make videos so to get the most cinematic look or the most natural motion blur there is a golden rule that you need to follow. So the golden rule says frame rate times two equals your shutter speed. But what if we're using shutter angle instead of shutter speed? Well, when they made movies back in the day, they used a spinning disc with holes cut into it to expose the film stock. And those discs came in a 90 degree a 180 degree or a 360 degree disc. So what that meant was that when the disc was spinning, it would only let light through the hole that was cut into the disc and then exposing the film for a set amount of time. And a 90 degree disc had a tiny hole resulting in a fast exposure and a 360 degree disc had a bigger hole, resulting in a much longer exposure. But as it just happened, the 180 degree disc had the most natural amount of motion blur. It also just happens to be the exact same as the golden rule. So 180 degree shutter angle is the same as the golden rule. So what is ISO? Well, ISO is a voltage boost of your camera sensor that results in the sensor getting more sensitive to light and that results in the image getting brighter. But it also has a really big drawback. You introduce a lot of digital color noise into your images and that is really unpleasant to look at. So in real life, we try to keep this number as low as possible to get the least amount of noise. But in the 3D world, we don't have this unwanted digital color noise. So you can crank it up as much as you want. So these three factors, the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter angle together make the exposure triangle. And that is how we're gonna expose our scene in 3D. So now that we know how cameras in the real world works, we're gonna apply it to our scene. 
And I have already rendered this image, so we are ready to start. And first of all, I'm gonna show you how I get my look. Here in our Redshift render view, we have this little settings icon. If we press that, let me just move this a bit over. So the first parameter we're gonna be controlling is the photographic exposure. And if we turn that on, you can already see our image gets a lot brighter. And keep in mind, this image is already exposed for the adjustments we're gonna make here. So you might need to turn down your lights when you're doing this exposure. So let's turn the photographic exposure on. Remember that we had our f-stop or our aperture. Well, you can't see it here, but it says f-stop and I'm always setting my f-stop to 5.6 because it's a good middle ground in the f-stop range. The second thing I do is I set my shutter time ratio and my shutter time ratio is my shutter angle. So remember that we had to set it at 180 to get the most natural motion blur. Well, I'm also gonna set mine to 180 and that's gonna bring our exposure down again. So the next thing I do is turn allow overexposure, turn that to one instead of 0.1. And you can see what it did. It made all the grays or all the highlights pop even more. So if you have any highlights in your scene that is too bright or is overexposed, you can bring this down to 0.8 or 0.9 if you're a bit overexposed. But I always bring mine to one because then I know I don't get any gray frames. So the last thing we need to adjust is our ISO. And remember that a low ISO in real life will get you a less noisy image. Well, it doesn't work that way in 3D, but I would like to think that it works that way in 3D. So I usually set mine to 50 or 100. But this time I found that a film speed or a ISO of 50 is the right thing to do. So I can see that it's a little bit dark. So we might go to a f-stop of 3.5. And as you can see, it's much brighter and maybe a little bit too bright, but I actually like my highlights like this. Because the next step I usually do is turn on some contrast. So go to this tab called color contrast, turn it on. You can use curves if you want to, or you can also use these exposure and contrast sliders. So what I found gave my images a little pop, as you might call it, or a little nicer look out of the render was to turn this contrast to 0.0. .0 five and as you can see it's a little bit more bright and a little bit more contrasted so that makes your images pop a little bit more so now we have our post effects set up in redshift so what about the render settings well if we take a look at our redshift render settings i usually just go with automatic sampling because Redshift has got a lot better at figuring out how many samples each frame needs to have. So I usually just leave it at basic mode and I do a custom threshold of 0 0.05. And I also turn this hardware acceleration on because if you have a RTX NVIDIA graphics card, you need to turn this on to use the RTX cores in your NVIDIA card. So for denoising, I do it afterwards. I usually use Neat Video or else I use Topaz Studio. I find that it does a really nice job of AI denoising. So let's say I have a very difficult scene. I just actually rendered a scene with a lot of glass in it 
and I needed to do my own render settings for that because it took a really long time with the built-in automatic sampler. So for that, I'll turn off automatic sampling. So I usually set my threshold to 0.1 or I set it to 0.05. That depends on how tough the scene is. But I'll set it to 0.1 for now. So for my minimal samples, I'll do 128. And for my max samples, I'll do oh like this. And for my max samples, I'll do 256. Then I'll go and do all my overrides down here. So let's say I did a lot of stuff with glass. Then I'll go and turn on reflection and refraction. And then I'll turn this up to 1024 or 512. And I always do it in the power of two because it makes a lot of sense when you're doing render stuff and render tasks. But for 90 or 95% of my work, I usually just do automatic sampling. Wow, that was exciting. <laughs> so if you like my approach, then please leave a like or just write to me in the comments if you want to know anything else I didn't cover in this video. And if you need help with anything or just want to chat, then DM me on Instagram. Or you can also just leave a comment down below and I'll always answer because I'm here for you guys. And a very important thing at last, so excited that we finally hit 4,000 subscribers and I really appreciate the help and the support. I hope that you'll stay with me for a long time so we can grow this community. And speaking of community, I also have a Discord. And without further ado, I'll just catch you guys next time. Goodbye.